Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. As I said in my last video, I'm actually pre-recording this, so it's actually Sunday, but I'm putting this up on Monday for you guys um, because I will be in Atlanta and I will not be able to record. So I wanted to make sure that I shared with you guys a video while I was gone, but you'll see me this weekend. I'll be back and I'll have some new content for you as always. Um, what I thought I would do is I would take this video to talk about five books that I cannot believe I haven't read yet. Um, they are all um, releases that you are going to also believe that I can, or be, be like, Russell, how have you not read these books yet? Come on. Um, but I'm not going to tell you as much about the books as I am going to tell you why I have not read them yet and sort of give an explanation that way. Um, so most of them, you guys are going to know the titles and you're going to know the stories. But I thought maybe what I could have you guys do is tell me down below of the five of the books that I'm about to tell you about, which one is your favorite, which one should I read first, and why I should read them. All of them, probably. But I thought I would uh, get your guys' input on what I should pick up next. Um, from this pile of books that you are not going to believe I haven't read yet. The first book is, of course, going to be A Place for Us by Fatima Farin Mirza. Come on, this book was everywhere. This was from Sarah Jessica Parker's imprint over at, I think it's Hogarth, right? And um, yeah, at Hogarth. Um, it was a debut novel and it was everywhere. And this is sort of a, um, a family saga about an Indian family, all of the people coming together. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this book, but the problem is I've heard so much about this book that I'm so worried that if I start it, I'm not going to like it as much because the hype is so big. Because let's be honest, sometimes a book can never live up to the hype that it is given. Um, but I think that this is going to be a book that I absolutely love. I also think that this may be a book that I need to just audio because I have a feeling that will really help me get set um, in, the, in the world that it takes place. But yeah, so the first one is A Place for Us by Fatima Farin, Farheen Mirza. And yeah, so that starts this list. But I do have one on this one that I think is going to be a surprise to people. But and that is Leading Men by Christopher Castellani. Um, this is a book that came out, I want to say early this year, um, that has been on my radar forever, because let's be honest, it is a um, fictional retelling of a weekend that happened at a party hosted by Truman Capote and attended by um, well, what's Tennessee Williams and his longtime lover, Frank. Um, and it's sort of, they meet this woman and it's really how that woman changes their lives and whatever. It is about literary people and a, and a literary event and talking about, you know, the gossip of that and all of that. And it takes place in Italy for portions of it. And yeah, I don't know why I haven't read this yet because that screams that it's a Russell book. Um, but for some reason, I'll just tell you this, I'm a little worried because I don't love Truman Capote. And I'm worried that I'm going to allow that to change sort of my perception of this book. And I know he's probably not even the main character. Uh, but for me, for some reason, Truman Capote has always been problematic. Um, and so for some reason, I keep putting this book off because of that. And I really shouldn't. Have you guys read Leading Men by Christopher Castellani? And can you tell me about it? And we're just going to take a moment. How handsome is Christopher Castellani? Whew, need to get to this one. The next one was really, really just super duper all over booktube for a while because of Matthew Sharapa, who called Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergi Di Sergei Dijenko, translated by Julia Metov Hershey, um, and he just raved and raved about it. And I bought it the minute he started talking about it because I thought it really did speak to a type of sci-fi YA book that I would absolutely adore. Um, and then everyone I knew started buying it and every it was everywhere. And it's sort of the same problem. I've been putting it off till it sort of gets out of my conscious so that I can just come at it 
fresh. Um, and then the other day, someone recommended it to me on Goodreads, and I was like, no, no, I'm back to being recommended it, and I was hoping that I wouldn't have any of that. Um, but I absolutely think that I want and will love this book, and um, I expect, really, um, to read it soon, because I think the sequel is coming out not too far in the future. So that is Vida Nostra by Marina and Sergei Daichenko, translated from the Russian by Julia Metov Hershey. Okay, the next one is just ridiculous. Why I have not read this book. And that is Washington Black by Essie Adugan. Um, this book, you guys, this is everywhere, right? A lot of people wanted it to win the Booker Prize last year, and it was a lot of people's pick for that prize. It won the Canadian uh, Award for their sort of big literary prize last year. Um, so it has gotten a ton of hype, and that is exactly why I haven't read it. The other thing is, I know a lot of people in Britain who have read it and loved it, and I haven't seen a lot of people in the U.S. read it. So I was wondering if there would be some sort of disparity between it and then it kept winning award after award after award. Um, and I think I'm going to love it, but it's the hype thing again. But can you, I mean, come on, this book was everywhere. Of course I own a copy and why haven't I read it yet? And that's Washington Black by Ezzie Edugan. This is, and I'm saying her name wrong. I know I am. Um, and yeah, I don't know why I haven't read it. Last but not least is the book that gets recommended to me more than any book out right now. And it is probably the biggest selling book right now, and it is everywhere. And yeah, every time I talk about books or debuts that came out and things, da, 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 someone brings up Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. I kid you not that I have gotten more emails, direct messages about why I have not read Where the Crawdad Sings. And that is exactly why. I also don't know that this book really fits into my normal sort of uh, sweet spot. So I do know and I have heard that the nature writing portion of it is absolutely gorgeous, which does entice me. Um, but this book was everywhere. And if you go into a Barnes and Noble, it is still everywhere. Um, and it really is, I kid you not, so many emails and so many direct messages why I haven't read this book yet. And I don't want to read it and not like it. I feel like that would be so disappointing to you guys. So I haven't read it yet, but it needs to clearly be read so that I can have an opinion on probably the biggest book of the last year. <laughs> so there you go. And that is Where the Crawdad Sings by Delia Owens. So those are five books that I cannot believe. Well, you probably can't believe. I'm trying to make them pretty here. That's not working. Um, that I haven't read yet. They're just books that I really, really need to get to and books that I, I know that I will eventually probably love. I just need to sit down and do it. Which of these books do you think I should start with? Which are your favorites? I know where the crawdad sings is going to be talked about a lot in the comments below. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, you tell me which book to read and let me know and come back. Come back and see another video. As always, I wish you happy reading and I'll talk to you soon. And, um, oh yeah, sorry. I just all of a sudden was like, hmm. <laughs> happy reading guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.